Hello everyone, welcome to episode 14 of Top Chat. My name's Matt, joining me as always is my good friend and co-host, Joe. Hello mate. Hello mate, how are you? I'm tired. You're tired, we've just had a hectic morning, haven't we? We have. You've well, a hectic half an hour. Kitchen. So uh, I was just doing a wash, a clothes wash, and halfway through the machine decided it didn't want to work anymore. Um, and then we realised it had tripped pretty much half the house, as yeah. in the fuse, the fuse had tripped. So that was yeah, fun. Indeed. I had to take out a load of wet clothes and bed things and whatever and hang them up. We then reset the fuse. I put them back in the machine thinking I could finish the wash and the same thing happened. So I've just had to take it all out again. Wow. Yeah, what else fun. happens in your rock and roll life? I know, right? Crazy. Um, Not a lot, but I'm going to start by saying that we might have a few new listeners. So um, welcome to the madness. Thanks for that, Woo. That was great. Uh, so last night I put out a uh, a call to action or a cry for help on Reddit for video game music because that's what we're going to be discussing in a minute is uh, music in video games, does it add to the atmosphere? Uh, is it integral to the plot at times? Does it add value to the game? And so yeah. on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I threw that up on Reddit, asked for some suggestions and we got about 15. Whoa. So uh, I'll be reading them all out later on. If you were one of those 15 people, you will be getting a shout out. Whoa. Yeah, so uh, hey, stick around for that. Wooing. I don't woo in every episode. No, this is the way. first episode containing woos, so um, <sighs> don't get yes. used to it, I suppose. But yeah, thanks very much if you are listening. Um, that's great. Yeah. It's a strange time for us to finally have thought of doing video games and music, considering when we oh. were starting this. As we're both quite big music fans, particularly like metal, mm. we were going to do a metal podcast, weren't we? We were, but there's too many of them, and there's not enough, yeah, gaming not enough po- video games. There's not enough video gaming podcasts. But on that mantra of uh, liking metal music and, and video games, that comes up later on. One of the comments, actually, is it? Well, yeah, there's a few that I think you're going to like. Tidy. But we'll we'll get to that later on. But first of all, uh, we have some recurring segments on the show that we like to start off with. Um, we've realised in our quick debrief before we started recording that these segments are actually going to be very quick. It's going to be somewhat of a shorter episode this week, so if you are from Reddit, your shout-out is coming kind of sooner than it would be on any normal week. So, our first segment, what have you been playing, if anything? Nothing. No, me neither. I knew this was going to happen. It's been one of those weeks where... I haven't stopped. I've been so busy with work. I've had, like, two interviews. I've had... Like, my manager's gone away, so I'm now in charge for the next two weeks, Ooh, which is fun. Oh, I know, right? Um, I don't really want to be. They don't pay me enough. And it's just been a bit... A lot. A bit a lot. A bit a lot. It's been a bit much, so I've not really... I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, so I've I've completed the... I might have said this last week, actually. It's all kind of been a blur, but I've completed the... Um, oh, I did say this last week, so I got confused between epilogue and prologue. Hmm. So I haven't actually played. No. No. Well, anyway, for those of you that are new, I've finished the epilogue of... No, the prologue, for God's sake, I got it wrong again, of Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, so I'm done with Haytham, and I'll be playing as Connor soon. Mm. Well, normally on this these segments, you have basically say, oh, I've played Assassin's Creed. Yes. And I reel off the million games that I've somehow played in the week. Yes. But at the moment, I'm just sort of in a bit of a, a gaming lull, you know? Just uh... You had a pretty hectic start to the year, because you've already... Like completed what, like four games this year? Four big games, definitely. Yeah, yeah. but wow. um, I'm working a lot more now, so good. You know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play some stuff today. I think. Yeah, nice. Well, yeah. if you are new, um, please recommend us to your friends. We're trying to get off the ground still. It's week fourteen. Oh, so it's episode. We don't do it by week. No. I do this every time. It's episode fourteen, but um, so we missed one week. We missed one week because you were ill. Um, and last week I was deathly ill as well. Mm. No, I wasn't. But um. Yeah, we're not very good at marketing, so mm. kind of do it for us. We no, do I'm also have a series of uh, called Top Opinions, mm. where we each do like a little video essay that's like ten minutes ish long. Yeah, about that, about that, about our opinions on the video game industry. Bit yeah. of an essay. So, for example, my most recent one was about microtransactions and the fact that I don't think they're actually as bad as everyone thinks they are. You've done one that's been one of our most successful videos, actually, where you talk about. Um, there's too many games. Too many games, yeah. Which I wholeheartedly agree with. Wet, I've been on my latest one for about a month now. I was going to say, I haven't had the time to do it. Yeah. So I'm going to try and finish that today, hopefully. Mm. See, I've got one ready to go, but I don't want to publish it until you've published yours because <laughs> it's quite nice at the moment we're alternating. Yeah. But uh, fuck it, I might just get on with it and do it. Oh, also, yeah, we swear a lot. So um, if you don't fuck like that, it. if you don't like that, then. Um, 
ploppers. Sorry, that's not anything. Uh, so that segment is pretty much done already, and we also don't have a Sebi from the Webby, do we? Yeah, no. But, but we will have a Sebi, not from the Webby, but in person. A real-life Sebi. Next week, uh, we're going to be recording a Bethesda special. I don't think Matt will be involved in that. But he'll no. be back for the news and stuff, because we're just going to insert it. I thought it was this week. Within the re- regular show. Yeah, well, he's, I couldn't work it out. So oh, I see. So he's, he's we're recording it. Saturday, oh, yeah. This is going to break the fourth wall. We're recording it this week, but it won't go up until next week. Yeah, so like next Tuesday, Lovely. Wednesday, we just have to record the news, and that's about it. Lovely stuff. Well, you yeah. can look forward to that. Um, I guess we'll just move straight into the news then, because there's actually quite a fair bit. There is, for there's once. Been, for once, yeah. Well, we seem to have weeks where there's either completely shit all, or yeah. a lot. And well, this some, is yeah, the latter. Some of this news, I think, is a reaction to other people doing news... So okay, <laughs> I'll explain that once we've got through the, okay. the news. I don't want to give anyway spoilers for the news in case people haven't seen the news. If you haven't seen the news, you are about to hear the news, which is even better because you don't have yeah. to read anything. You just have to listen. But our news segment. What's occurred in what's, what's occurred in? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, uh, the rather somber news of Notre Dame. I'm sure everyone's seen about this. So the cathedral that's been stood in Paris for what, like 800 years. Um, caught on fire the other day um, which was very sad did you did you watch like the footage or anything have you seen um, bits I saw the footage I mean it's yeah. it's kind of sad I guess but you know I, at the same time three black churches were burned down in America by some crazy white person oh really yeah which exactly like, yeah not, I didn't know about that I mean it's, a, it's an old building it's a historic building but I think the the reaction is a bit strange Okay, this is interesting. We we differ on this. I think it's well, really sad. I think it's well, heartbreaking. I don't my know thing why. Is, is the amount of people <laughs> who are like these millionaires around France are like, here you go, here's a hundred million. We will rebuild. I, I pledge I all this money. The Catholic Church is worth thirty billion pounds. Banter. Thirty billion pounds, and That's all, a lot of money. And it's like these millionaires have already raised a billion mm. to remake this church. But, I don't think it's just a case of it being a religious thing. No, 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 thing, I know. It's, it's like it's, it's Paris's it's ham, la, thing, isn't it? Landmark, landmark. Yeah, I know. But, you know, it's... Okay. Well, anyway. It just shows how easily these millionaires could actually come together and, like, sort things out. Solve all the world's problems. But they go we, for a We need search. a new world order. But anyway, um, to make it related to games, so what no, I was going to talk not about... A, not a Notre Dame podcast. No, we're not. Yet. There's a running joke that you have to get used to. Um, so Ubisoft is giving, because, you know, on that donations hype, or whatever you were just talking about, not really the best way of putting it, Ubisoft is giving half a million euros to someone who's in charge of this. Um, I've just the Hunchback. Put, yeah, the Hunchback, that guy. Um, oh, what's his? Quasimodo. Quasimodo. He is actually um, in charge of the rebuild, and they've given him half a million euros uh, with... Um, what am I saying? To help. Why with? Why did I just say with? Uh, to help with the rebuild of Notre Dame. Uh, they're also using the game uh, in certain aspects to help the rebuild in terms of like remaking it to how it was. Because yes. Unity, when they made Unity, when Ubisoft made that game, they recreated a one-to-one almost replica of Notre Dame. So they can actually use Unity as a game to re-sculpture parts of the Spire and the inner building that has been consumed by Isn't fire. That a nice story? Unity, like hmm. the shittest game. That's the ever shittest been released. Assassin's Creed. Like, a yeah. game that was literally on fire when it was released. Oh, it was terrible. And it's probably still on fire. I don't it's, think they fixed it. It's the only Assassin's Imagine Creed. That. Quasimodo's like I presume they're gonna do like a sky cam kind of thing. He doesn't actually have to play Assassin's Creed to do it. But he's gonna be going around with his controller and he's just gonna fall through the world and he's like, Wow, what's the mm. point? Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure what any of that meant. Um, but yeah, Unity's crap. It's the only Assassin's Creed I've never played. But it's now going to be given away for free on PC as a goodwill gesture, I guess. Not really sure. But, um, I don't know. What, what, why free? I don't know. But it's kind of a hard... Well, they know it's a piece of shit and no one's buying it anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, well, it kind of makes sense. In the bigger uh, scheme it's good of press. things, it's kind of... You know, it shows the value of these video games yeah. and like the artists who are recreating things mm. so accurately that it's like better than any blueprints that they have or any photos or yeah. drawings that they have of Notre Dame is to play an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. It was a, a blessing in disguise. Testament in to 
creativity. Absolutely. Wow. So um, yeah. I think personally good on you, Ubisoft. Um, I kind of get your point on the money thing, though. I'll give you that. But anyway, that's going to happen. So, yeah, props to those guys. In more interesting news, mm. we've got some details on next-gen consoles, haven't we? Apparently so. At last, so you've made a couple of uh, predictions on this podcast that seem to have come true. What was that episode two, I think? Episode two or three, very early on. Um, don't know whether you came up with them off the top of your own head, or maybe you read something and thought, oh yeah, that, that could happen, but maybe so could this. Anyway, irrelevant, because we have details on PS5, even though it's not called that at the moment, um, and kind of details on Xbox and where they're headed for the future. Mm. But we'll start with uh, PlayStation because um, there's more news about it. I guess. Yeah. Well, actually, should we start with Xbox because there's less? How do you yeah, want to do? What do you want to do? Let's go with PlayStation. Mate. Let's go with PlayStation. So fucking Xbox. It's not Suck. called. It's not called PlayStation Five. That's also those views are not representative of the podcast as a whole. We're not. <laughs> we're not console biased, and uh, we're not PC master race biased either because neither of us are PC Master Race but anyway not fucking nerds okay nice one there's oh, uh, there's the new Reddit oh. crowd gone already bye um, so <laughs> PlayStation 5 isn't called PlayStation 5 yet uh, yet I mean it will be if it's not I'll be amazed but yeah. Um, yeah it's currently just being referred to as next gen console uh, all we know is that it's not releasing in 2019 it's more likely to be next year it's almost definitely going to have a disk drive because it's got backwards compatibility with PlayStation 4 and it also is compatible with the current PlayStation VR which is quite a nice touch because mm -hmm. I imagine if you bought that and suddenly it's irrelevant after two or three years you'd be a little bit pissed. Uh, it's going to have a solid state drive rather than a hard disk drive uh, which is going to speed up loading times dramatically. Um, I'll give an example of that in a minute. So basically Mark Cerny who is... is it Cerny or Kearney? I don't really I don't know. know. He's he's very high up in PlayStation, isn't he? Like he's the guy that helped design most of PlayStation Four, and he also it, like he made Knack as well. That kind of not very good game <laughs> that launched with PlayStation Four. But anyway, he uh, did an interview with Wired magazine, um, and this is where we've got all these information and statistics from. So the CPU is based on an AMD eight core processor, which is going to be mad quick, uh, and the GPU. Are you following? Sorry, no. for the, sorry for the verbal diet. So CPU is just basically the processor. Yes. So eight cores is a lot. Woo! So a lot of like, many computers, most computers will either have dual or quad core processors. So but mine this is like eight. This That's is eight octa core. Octa core. Yeah, this is a lot of processors. So it's it's going to be Damn. or eight cores. Sorry, it's going to be mad quick, brah. Uh, and the GPU, which is the graphics, yes, uh, is going to feature ray tracing. Nice. Uh, now, I didn't know what this was, so I had to look it up. So, basically, ray tracing is, and I quote, this is actually from, I think, a Kotaku article. It is a technique that models the travel of light to simulate complex interactions in 3D environments. While ray tracing is a staple of Hollywood visual effects and is beginning to worm its way into $10,000 high-end processors, no game console has been able to manage it yet. Sounds expensive. Sounds bloody expensive. Um, and in terms of the price, no one has actually said anything yet. I guess it is kind of early days. Um, but within this interview, in this article that was in Wired, there wasn't a mention of the price, or uh, nor did they discuss it. But then the interviewer then went on his personal Twitter uh, and revealed that Mark Cerny or Kearney, however you say it, uh, didn't like want to digress that information. But what he did say is that, and this is again a quote from Mark, or quoted from the author of the article who is quoting Mark. Um, I believe that we will be able to release it at a suggested retail price that will be appealing to gamers in light of its advanced feature set. So basically, it's going to cost a lot, but this is why. Yeah, well, I mean, it all sounds... I mean, every console comes out and they're like, the CPU is 10,000 and things like the hard drives is a million <laughs> gigabytes. And then... It's sort of, you know, just pretty standard fare. Mm. I, don't, I was kind of more expecting now with a PS4 Pro that this was just going to be like another half step. But I mean, this sounds like... It sounds like a huge step a up. A huge step, yeah. To give you an example, um, I meant to do this a second ago, and I didn't write it down for some reason, but I can vaguely remember it. So as part of this, yeah, this Wired interview, uh, Mark had set up a PS4 Pro with Spider-Man, 
a game that you have, have completed. Seen. I've seen this. Well. Um, and then next to it, a very early dev kit build of this new console, uh, running the same game. Mm. And there's fast travel, I understand, yes. in Spider-Man. So fast travel uh, on the PS4 Pro took roughly 10 to 15 seconds. The guy wasn't counting, but anyway. Uh, and then on this new next-gen console, it took 0.8 seconds, mm. which is, as I said, is mad but, but quick. But where are they going to put in useful hints and tips? Yeah, loading yeah, yeah, screens. Yeah. Did you know that if you press L1 and triangle, you can leap off your horse while riding it? Is that an Assassin's Creed one? Yeah, I think I've got the buttons wrong as well. I think it's L1 and X. Uh, anyway. I didn't know. No, you wouldn't know. I, I did see this article, and um, it was a really weird like, sort of way to, you know, first details... But mm. I guess without E3, you know. Yeah. And I think this was also because Xbox, as we're going to say in a minute, had a bit of a Ooh, reveal. You know, PlayStation are always like, all right, we'll just trump you, as always, as they try to do. Yeah. Um, but one big thing they did mention in this article was actually uh, how much they're going to be focusing on sound and sound mm. design. Well, that's a, the, yeah. In the PS5. That's part of this, oh, what's it called? Ray tracing. It's part of that yeah. as well. Because they want to, you know, focus on more like... Uh, 3D sound and things like that mm. for all those dorks who wear headphones and like oh I can hear the footsteps sorry that I like to listen to games properly I hate wearing headphones playing games It dep I used to love it I don't really do it anymore but um, it depends what I'm playing as well to be I honest. am thinking of getting like a not a home theatre but like a sound bar because my TV speakers are like shot at the moment get a Sonos mate they're only like two any grand. like sort of bass and it just goes like, oh don't do that Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, well, it sounds like that. It sounds, it sounds, like, sounds that. like what that will sound like. Real life examples. Exactly. I just want to immerse you in mm. my world. Well, it's a good thing, I think, that they're um, focusing more on sound because it's always been a thing in games, like a, a bar that they're measured by in terms of development is always how do the graphics look? Mm. It's never how is the overall presentation of the game. It's sound yeah. and like feel to a certain aspect. Like when they removed Rumble from Six Axis, that was obviously a big thing. But sound and actual like feel of a game is something that doesn't really get talked about. Yeah. It's more like, There's oh, it looks very shiny. Something so. that I actually noticed going backwards, because I'd never really noticed like sound getting better in video games. Mm. But when I went backwards, because I've been playing the, uh, the Mass Effect trilogy recently on my PlayStation mm. 3, and I've realised like, the sound effects are very scarce. There's like a couple of things going on at the same time, but it can't manage to do everything. You mm. know, It's like there'll be an explosion but then you won't hear like loads of particles and debris falling everywhere mm. I don't know if that's just Mass Effect but then I look yeah. forward, then I look at like Horizon when all the machine parts are going everywhere and you can sort of kind of feel like you can hear each individual sound like everything's making a sound like everything actually exists in that world so yeah I'm looking forward to that sounds, the PS5 sounds expensive though I think but, it's going to retail I can't guess at dollars, but I think in pounds, I think it's going to be at least five hundred. Yeah, that's PS3 lovely. was what four hundred and fifty when it first launched. Four hundred something like something that. like that, and it that affected sales massively. Like PS3 lost against Xbox. Oh, PS3, sorry, three sixty. Yeah, PS3 was five hundred, I think. Other, mm, yeah, about that. It was like it was a lot of money. Yeah, that's that's PS4, what I'm kind of worried about. I feel like they're, lately they've kind of been uh, we're going back to the PS3 Sony where we're just going to cock up like we're on top after the PS2 and we're just going to like fail yeah. you're paraphrasing because we is not we're not Sony <laughs> you're paraphrasing them right yeah I was being Sony yeah, yeah right okay you're taking on their persona not yes, paraphrasing their persona yeah, we, we are not Sony we're not affiliated in any way with the gaming industry just as a yet. to throw it <laughs> yet oh yeah have you heard back no. from <laughs> no you no. were never going to no no I'm oh, sorry anyway um, so speaking of Microsoft even though we weren't um, last night, which actually wasn't last night, it was the 16th of April, which was, as we said last week, when they were going to be doing their Microsoft Direct, and it's not called Direct, that's Nintendo. Yeah, inside Xbox. Inside Xbox, that's what it's called. Um, so they have announced, drumroll please, don't actually do it, um, an all-digital version of Xbox One. Yes. Crowd goes... Silent. <sighs> yeah. Kind of... We, we talked about this, really. Yeah. It's, it's something I was looking forward to, but as you all now elaborate on this is why I'm not looking forward to it so oh okay I'm just going to read it as I've written yeah. it then because I'm not sure what you mean so it's going to have a one terabyte hard drive and be priced around $250 which is roughly £200 
um, although that is TBA for now. Uh, Microsoft has said it's going to receive price drops to always keep it cheaper than the standard Xbox One S, as it bloody should be. Uh, and it comes preloaded with Minecraft, Forza Horizon 3, and Sea of Thieves, because of course it doesn't have a disc tray, so if you get your brand new console home and you turn it on and you've got nothing to play, it's kind of like, I don't know, that would just be a bit of a anti-climax. Mm. So it has three somewhat, I mean, Sea of Thieves is, is relevant, Forza's a great game, Minecraft I couldn't give less of a shit about, uh, oh, personally. one of the most popular but it's, games. Yeah, yeah, it's the best-selling game of all time, so it makes sense. Personally, uh, it's a bit late now, isn't I it? Do they need this? I liked the idea because, as I've said, like they're going to be exploring the all digital future, no disc trays. You know, they're finally breaking into that space, like the it's sort of where the gaming industry is going. Mm. And I thought, oh, Xbox doing it first. That's such a good idea. But they have balls this up, I reckon. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's quite expensive. dollars. Like, I know they're saying it's always going to be cheaper than the Xbox One S, but it's not really. Like I looked up mm. Xbox One S's, you can get one for less than two hundred quid. Can you? You can get one for about one hundred seventy. I want an Xbox, kind of. Why? <laughs> you don't need one. Yeah, I know, but I want to play Fable. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And the uh, Insomniac game. I can't remember. Uh, Sunset Overdrive. Oh, oh, that's been out for so yeah, I long. Know, but I want to play it. Leave All right. alone. All right, well, I don't need it. Um, I don't think this is relevant. Oh, it's not, but, not relevant. And then also to not huh. put it in with um, the Games Pass. Like, just I think there's an offer like get yeah. Games Pass for like five dollars for three months. But that's for anyone can get that. Yeah. But, like, why not put like three months of Game Pass in this? A month of Game Pass. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's true. Because it, like you can only play digitally. So. Yeah. You're never going to get pre-owned games. Like sales are all well and good, but like, yeah, I, I don't think this is going to sell particularly. No. Particu- and it's also called the Xbox really well. One Sad. Is it? It's the Xbox One S. Oh, all, all digital. digital. Xbox One Sad. That's really funny. So I didn't no know that. Thought, thought that one through. Very good, Microsoft. Um, um, one not, caveat, just to add to this, they have oh, also okay. announced the Game Pass Ultimate. Which oh, with is Xbox Gold. With Xbox Live Gold, which sounds like a pretty good deal, because I think it's like £10 a month, so you get like mm. all that game library and then a free game from Xbox Gold and play online. So, consumer-friendly stuff that Xbox does. Yeah, not bad. <clears throat> not bad at all. In Star Wars news, because we always seem to talk about Star Wars, but still haven't done our Star Wars episode. Star Wars. Um... Jedi Fallen, so I'm just going to completely ignore that, Jedi Fallen Order has finally been unveiled by Respawn uh, with a brand new story trailer. Presumably you've watched it, of course you have. Yeah, Yeah, me too, I've watched it twice, two or three times. Eh. Um, uh, hold on, the game puts you in control of a former Jedi Padawan, uh, it's in between episode th- episodes 3 and 4, which I think is a great setting, although we have already had the Clone Wars, so... Yeah, quite a lot in there. Um, with the Jedi being hunted and killed by the Empire's Order 66. Execute Order 60. That's that, isn't it? Yes. yes. Uh, Respawn have stated that the game is single-player only and will contain no microtransactions, which bucks the EA trend in licensed games, uh, and you won't be using EA's... Fro- sorry, it won't be using EA's Frostbite engine, instead going for Epic's Unreal Engine. Yes. What a weird hybrid uh, hybrid of developer-publisher hardware stuff. Yeah, well... A bit weird, isn't it? Lots of people use Unreal. Yeah. And the game releases November 15th of 2019, so just before Episode 9, which is titled yeah. The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Hmm. Eh. Yeah. I'm not big on Star Wars at the moment. I'm not feeling the way they're going with it. I like honest. the look of this. I mean, I like... I'm sure I like the gameplay. The story trailer, I was just like, this is all very meh. You know, oh, it's a Padawan who escaped Order 66. I feel like we've heard that a lot. Yeah, like the Star Wars Rebels is kind of based around that. Um, Force Unleashed is almost based around that as well. I'd like to see something between six and seven, to be honest. There's a lot of time in between there that could yeah, be interesting. Yeah, there is. There's I think Battlefront Two was uh, in that time frame, but apparently the story was a bit yeah. uh, as, again. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the gameplay is going to be great, yeah. and like Respawn seem to be able to do what they want uh, under EA they're sort of like no we're not going to put in microtransactions and you know yeah. no I mean I don't no know how multiplayer. I don't know how well um, Apex Legends has has fared to be honest I don't think it's killed Fortnite 
um, because it's nothing like, seems to be it's able not to killed be. Fortnite, but it's, it's no. carved its own space. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it has. But um, I feel like that's probably why this doesn't have a multiplayer and why it won't have microtransactions is because it doesn't really need to. Mm. As we've said quite a few times, n- games don't need these things necessarily. It um, could also be Disney being like, stop that. Yeah, I'll have true. none of that. I'd like to think that it is because I, I love Disney. Um, and their anti-Semitic ways. I do not like that. That That's what's called a joke. Um, kind of disappointed there's not going to be a multiplayer. Really? A little bit. I don't know. Lightsaber combat, multiplayer. It's a bit too For Honor, isn't it? Yeah, but For Honor's crap. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, but it's not going to play like For Honor. Have you seen oh, how slow God. For Honor is? Uh, well, I don't... Yeah, but doing... What I'm saying is doing two people against each other with lightsabers. Yeah. Like, it fun. always looks really clunky in Battlefield. Front. Well, if anyone was going to do it well, it would have been respawn, but or respawn. Would but it? anyway, in other, sorry, are you done with that? Yeah, should we move on? Yes. In other Star Wars news, of course, because Star Wars is everything. Uh, there's a new Lego Star Wars game in development, titled Lego Star Wars Ultimate. This is rumored, by the way. Oh, it's rumored. Well, you could have bloody put that, yeah, couldn't I could you? Have, yeah, um, sounds like it's going to be a collection of the previous Lego Star Wars games, which. I've played um, Force Awakens, and it's bloody great. Is it? Lego games are just so good. I played the the first one, which was episodes 4, 5, and 6. That was mm. good, but I never played any of them. I'd like to go back and play them. Um, but yeah, this Ultimate Collection is probably going to have the previous games, and we'll maybe add in episodes 8 and 9, just in time for the release of the new film. Yeah, because they didn't so... do episode 8, which is kind of weird. Because of shit. Okay. Anyway, not a Star Wars podcast. Not a Star Wars podcast. Yet. Also episode... That is a yet, though. It's definitely not a yet. Um, well, no, episode really. 8 is not shit. But it that is. would have been hard to make a game. I feel like episode 7 was very much like an action movie, whereas episode 8 was a bit more of like a... Shit movie. Yes, okay, very good. Uh, moving on. Voice actress, and I'm going to say this wrong, Janina Gavankar. Do you, you reckon that's, that's yeah, pretty that's bad, right? Uh, she played a small role in Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds, which was the DLC, and she may have just accidentally revealed that a sequel is in development. Uh, she told fans, uh, and this is quote, It's incredible. Just wait till you see the sequel. You're going to die. I know some secrets. Secrets? Secrets? <laughs> <laughs> I know some secrets. You're going to die. So uh, thanks yeah. for that. We're, we're going to die, apparently. See, I'm sure this is in like it's real. I'm sure they're Probably. doing a, a new one. But this voice actress who has a small role and the way she's saying it is just kind of like I know something you don't know, or like I'm important. Look at me. I know things. I don't know if like yeah, maybe she's trying to get some clout, as the kids yeah. say. It seems a bit of a... It also reads as if, because she gives no information, it's just like, oh, you're going to die, you're going to yeah. die. That that kind of sounds like she doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah. So maybe if they are developing Horizon 1 Dawn, mm-hmm. I still think that's the funniest thing you've said on the podcast, which was episode one, that's I believe. That's kind of upsetting, but... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. Well, it, well, it was it was one of those jokes where you don't even laugh, you just go, oh, yeah, that was clever. I'm quite funny. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it just sounds like she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Yeah. But maybe we're just being I can't wait till she's men. like the fucking title character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's Game of the Year 2020. Yeah. Um, anyway, in the most exciting news of all, yes, and we've all been waiting for this one, yes. on March the 4th, 2022, yes. we're getting a Minecraft movie. Yes. The only thing that I think is weird about this is the fact that they've said March the 4th. Why is that? So, it's three years away. Why is that so specific? Usually, it's like coming in twenty twenty two. Yeah. Or like spring twenty twenty two, not March the fourth. <laughs> like what? Well, maybe they're trying to get like pre orders in now. Get the people who are still twelve years old. Mm. Get them to book their tickets before I they, they can book tickets. That well, I don't know before they turn fifteen and decide that Minecraft is not for them. But adults love Minecraft. Well, I started playing Minecraft and I was like. It came out when I was like 14 or 15. Oh. You know, I've never played it. Or I, I've played like 10 seconds. That's quite a good and game. I just, I don't know, it doesn't... That's quite fun. Well, go. I like building sort of games mm. and okay and things like that. Well, that's the news pretty much. Was yeah. there anything else that you'd seen that you wanted to throw in? No, I've had pretty much thrown it. But we sort of went through that a bit quicker than we normally would. Yeah, we would. Well, this is the other Matt thing. Matt blew up the kitchen. Because I destroyed the kitchen, I'm in somewhat of a rush this morning now. Yes. So in about 45 minutes, I need to be 
getting ready to leave for my yeah. employment. So at the old watch company. Yeah. So let's You're move. You're managing today. Well, I don't manage, manage the time, Mr. Sandman. Um. So, what? I don't think that makes sense at all. It does. Um. So we'll move on to the main topic, which is of course video game music. Yes. So as I said earlier, oh, here we go. Reddit, Reddit people. Here we go. This is your time to shine. So I put out. Uh, a call for help on Reddit in the gaming um, subreddit because I thought that would be most appropriate. Are you dabbing? Sort of. Okay. Stretching. Um, so I just said, Reddit, me and my mate, we're about to record a podcast episode on music and video games, how it adds to the atmosphere, blah, 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 blah. Who's got any ideas? Didn't get too many upvotes, but received a decent amount of comments, so I was pleased with that. Um, so we'll start off. No, I'm going to get. Slack you off. No, not at all, actually. I expected one or two, like, oh, a shameless plug. And I was like, well, yeah, it is a shameless plug, but also yeah. it kind of worked. But we, um, do, we, we want our, our audience participation. <laughs> we really do, and that's difficult yeah. when you don't have an audience. Exactly. So you've got to get one just somehow. Sort of like, <laughs> talking into this microphone, putting it out, you know, not really getting. And hoping much that someone feedback. finds it. Yeah. Saying that, actually, you know my thing that I started up before bringing this idea to you and doing it together? Yes. My other gaming thing. I logged into it the other day for the first time in probably three months just to see what it was at. And my Assassin's Creed video has got 200 views. Has it? <laughs> yeah, That's, I don't know how. That is like literally. Because we looked yeah. back recently, maybe about two months ago, mm. and that has now doubled yeah. in the time we've probably got about three views. Just a fucking great video, that, apparently. Don't really yeah. know why, but what are you chuckling at? Just that. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's let's start with our our redditors and thank you again if you are listening. Actually, yeah, let us know if you are listening. Get in touch on Reddit. Let's or, tell everyone why they're wrong. Or um, at Top Chat Podcast on Twitter, or find us on YouTube um, and leave a comment. But for now, starting from the top. So, oh god, Reddit names are so hard to say. I'm just gonna wing it and sorry if I get it wrong. B Hotark ninety one said going to Mexico for the first time in Red Dead Redemption. Um, neither of us have played it, have we? Which no, is quite difficult. I think so. Um, and then, sorry, what? Never mind. Okay. And then that got a reply in itself from Otis Nemo Nobody, who comes up later on, who said, "Was just going to post this myself." And they do something similar in Red Dead Two when, and it's blacked out because it's a spoiler. Um, so uh, I'm not really sure what that is. Okay. Um, but thanks. Maybe for they that. go to Mexico in Red Dead Two. Maybe they do. Uh, thanks for blocking out the spoiler, though. That is appreciated. Um, Young Trey says any Halo ending their music always makes gameplay way more intense um, um, and I completely agree the Halo theme tune that's pretty iconic now. Halo and oh. Destiny Jesus Bungie have just got such a good sound team um, Elixir said Doom nothing like those heavy riffs blasting while you slaughter demons from hell love this comment um, at the end of literally every fight the music will change up and drop off again which sounds cool I was, yeah that would be and, pretty sick. Yeah, I, I mean, I replied saying that we're both, you know, pretty... We're pretty into heavy music, aren't we? Yeah. And we're, we're quite into games, so uh, Doom is... Yeah, Doom's a great shout. Uh, Bone Monkey 12 said, Ladies of the Woods, Witcher 3, uh, nails the scene and has a nice pagan vibe, apparently. We've, again, we're so crap. We've not played Witcher 3, I'm but... I'm too scared to play Witcher 3. <laughs> yeah, but I've got it, but I'm too scared. It's I didn't know much. you had it. I do, yeah. Devil it's, Worship. It's like 10 pounds, and it's like 300 hours of gameplay. Oh, that is a lot. Um, yeah, got got to love the the pagan vibe there. Sounds good. Uh, you'll like this one. Yes, Mister Nosh says, oh, I love that name. Walking into Afterlife in Mass Effect Two, uh, that song was per- that song choice was perfect for that moment in the game and really added to the visuals of the scene. As did leaving Earth in Mass Effect Three when you have to leave Earth. Yeah, great I, comment. I just started playing Mass Effect Three. Mm. Uh, again, I was worried about playing that because Mass Effect One and Two are some of my favourite games of all time. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I'll elaborate on Mass Effect in a minute when I get to mine. Okay. Um, HSKFMN. I'm not sure if that's meant to be readable. Such but a catchy name. Yeah, it just rolls off the tongue. Um, God of War 1 to 3 are some of my favourite game soundtracks. Mm, I've heard a lot of yeah, that. Sounds good. Um, to Thest. Not, yeah, just not sure. Uh, he says, or sorry, they say literally any of the Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 soundtracks. Um, I've watched a hell of a lot of like Bloodborne videos, mm. and it always sounds great. Um, another shout for Bungie or Halo from M Mitch One Hundred One Four says Halo Reach or the entire series. Okay. Um, and again, yet yeah, Bungie are just quality. I love this comment. Mentioned him a minute ago. So this is Otis Nemo Nobody, 
and he says, uh, in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, mm. the song that plays during the final boss battle, uh, it stands out uh, quite a bit because prior to that, the music in the game is largely ambient tones and Viking chanting. This song is sort of the first time in the whole game something that actually kind of sounds like conventional music starts playing, so you know you're in a special moment and it spurs you on. Yeah, I've heard what a lot a about that. What a great comment. Yeah, that was really Love good. Love that. Yeah. I've heard a lot about the, uh, the sound design in that game more than the music but mm. yeah i can imagine that sort of crescendo in yeah i mean if if most of the game is just like ambient stuff and then chanting and then suddenly there's an actual song you, i mean i get that it sounds like the yeah game you, has you would just be come out on switch as well so well maybe of, you, you should get into it then interested in it. um so yeah thanks for that that was probably my favorite comment to be honest um dear raziel uh, says way to fall in metal gear solid 3 and my manly tears um, so I thought I'd comfort him. I said, we've all had moments like that. The ending song in Kingdom Hearts 2 gets me every time, and it does, to be fair. Um, Cult Odoastra, I think I've read that wrong, says, Kiss the Sky song, uh, Tales from the Borderlands. Um, I had to YouTube it because I didn't know what it was. Well, I know what Borderlands is, obviously. Um, but yeah, sounds really cool. Tay Tay B21, uh, recognising the Temple of Time music in Breath of the Wild. This is another one for you. Um, as the Temple of Time music from Ocarina of Time. Takes a bit of time to realise, but once you do it, it's hard to mm. see how empty everything is now. I can't picture the exact Well, you've not song. played Ocarina of Time, have uh, you? I've heard so. a lot about of Ocarina of Time's music being really good, because Ocarina is uh, a musical instrument. Anyway. It is, yeah. Um, but I am currently re-downloading... Uh, Breath of the Wild because I want to play it again. So I, I did say and I replied to Tay Tay and said Tay Tay like he's my friend. Hey, I keep assuming gender. Terrible. Well, well everyone. I did our say um, they are. You're all our friends. Uh, I said it's probably your favourite Switch game. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's in my top three games of all time. I think. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Episode one. E- by episode the way, one. If yeah. you want to get a bit more of a background on. Yeah. Um, another games. two in a row that you'll quite like, I think, anyway. So, this is Jeff, says... <laughs> My name's Jeff. My name's Jeff. Says, uh, booting up Morrowind's main menu music uh, for the first time, and then hearing ambient music roll into the score as you walk around Balmora, and a thunderstorm hits. That sounds... Uh, I wouldn't know. I haven't played Morrowind. Oh, Seb okay. would know, though. We'll and maybe that, we'll like. actually talk about that in yeah. the Bethesda special. I did re- Seb likes Morrowind. I did reply to, to Jeff and I said that one of our regular listeners will love this. Mm, so Seb. Seb, you better I fucking think, love it. I think that's his favourite Elder Scrolls actually. Yeah, from his listener top ten, I think it was it was higher than it was higher than Oblivion. I think he had Oblivion and Skyrim on there. Yeah. Anyway. Nerd. Um you'll like this one. OJ's murderer <laughs> or OJS Ooh. underscore murderer. <laughs> um <laughs> God, that's a good name. Yeah, like it's a great name. Uh, when I discovered Deantwort through Far Cry New Dawn. They're in New Dawn? Apparently they are, yeah. Well, I like Deantwort. You do like Deantwort, yeah. yeah. I knew you'd like that. I didn't that. know they were in uh, New no, Dawn. No, I had no idea. That's like, um, yeah, a kind of game like that, that would, they would really suit that, actually, yeah. Well, they're a That's bit cool. mental, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, and then finally, so Dragon Man Dan, I presume Dan likes dragons, um, the guitar part at the start-up screen of Halo 2 that leads right into the singing, and I, yeah... Wholeheartedly agree that, with that. I uh, very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, no, there's a guitar y bit and then it goes into the. Oh, so, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Thanks for that, everyone. That was brilliant. I, I enjoyed participating. Like, we're not oh. alone on this earth. We're not sitting we're not at a table. Involved. I genuinely hope at least, like, three or four of them listen to this yeah. because oh, it was wow. it was heartwarming to wake yeah. up. I'm not going to lie. I, I threw it up on Reddit when I was on the train home last night. I thought, oh, this probably won't get anything. Um, and then I looked at my phone this morning, and yeah, 15 inbox things saying that people nice. had commented. I was like, that's really lovely. So if, if you are listening, thanks very much. Yeah. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed the podcast. Yeah, and uh, if any of you are Bethesda fans, uh, throw us some hmm? things you enjoy about Bethesda games for next week. Oh, yeah. Well, shall I just put that up? Maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read it that Even one. put it in the comments. You know. Yeah, I'll read it that one on there. We'll see. But for now, right. we're going to talk about music ourselves, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. So, so it's time I'll... for our opinions. Yeah, but the only ones that really matter. Yeah, let's you be lot. Honest, yeah. Because that was just a. We, uh, we's hardcore, in it. We uh, just want to, you know, throw the peasants a bone sometimes. That was just a taster for what's to come. We are malevolent lords. No, genuinely, that was that was great. So thanks, everyone. Okay. Do you want to go first? Well, I shall I go well... first? Because I. Think... No, you, you lead with this because it was your idea. And I'm okay. still not entirely sure what you want to talk about, but I've basically written a very quick list of games that I think have good music or music yeah, that affects the game. That is exactly game. what I was going for. It's not good. like... Crack so on. I'm going to pr- 
hypothesis Ooh. with a sort of the idea behind the music that I like. I know uh, people who grew up with like SNES, N64, Sega's, things like that, they will normally sort of go back to uh, the 8 bit, 16 bit era of music, like that kind of chip tune type music just, I just think of Tetris now. straight away it's all uh, I have in my head is Tetris and I was thinking about like Pokemon Red because that was probably like the first game that I played properly um, and the music in that is quite iconic <laughs> yeah yeah but Pokemon Center then I realised yeah, yeah. how much I hate the sound of it like it really annoying I hate that mm. tinny kind of sound okay so most of the music that I go for is orchestral kind of like big dramatic moments or things like that yeah but, okay know, make me feel something i mean based off our, our reddit responses i would agree that that is or sorry i feel like they would agree that that is yeah what they so, like as so well i'll go with what someone's already said okay uh mass effect yeah. which is really like it's based around an orchestra but because you're exploring this new galaxy there's all this sense of wonder so they bring these kind of sort of Really wide synthy, uh, like padding, um, sci fi kind of sounds to it. Mm -hmm. uh, really, like, sort of 80s based okay. on top of like an orchestral soundtrack. And it like comes synth wave with, kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like sort of. <laughs> okay. um, there's this bit in the office US where this dorky guy is like, uh, he makes sound uh, soundscapes and he just sort of plays there going like nice and it's all kind of that kind of stuff and it makes you really appreciate the galaxy and it's all very dramatic but some standout moments in that uh, obviously the main theme tune mm -hmm. and then there's Uncharted Worlds which is again like like what I've just been talking about and it takes place like when you're on like an alien planet even in this universe like a Uncharted World literally uh, and it just it literally just um, makes you appreciate like I don't know just how much it adds to the game that this is something that's been unexplored. Yeah, and it's kind of like the soundtrack I'd want in my head if I was like leaving Earth, kind of thing. just like you said in Mass Effect <laughs> yeah, Three, yeah. that one. Uh, the same with Vigil. That's quite a similar one. It's a lot more somber tune. Uh, and then obviously Mass Effect Two Suicide Mission, uh, which is the very end of the game. Is this a spoiler? No, no, no. But okay. You're essentially running out of somewhere as it's kind of exploding. Fun. Um, and it's just like crescendos into this massive piece and like, you know, it's sort of like you're there with them and like it's very dramatic, very tense and the tempo uh, just puts you in to that um, like final, final stand kind of thing that you're making cool. in this place. So yeah, Mass Effect is probably one of my favourite in terms of music. Okay. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's the best music in video games, but it's definitely up there. Nice. I'm going to completely counteract that with ridiculous music. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to not gonna lie to you, I could only think of like three... <laughs> I'm basically... I'm not very good... For someone that is... I always listen to podcasts, I always listen to music... I play an instrument, I my ears are fucked from years of abuse, and I love listening to things. Who put their dick in your ear? But um, I, for some reason, when I play games, I don't really pay attention to the music. It's like well, the last yeah. thing that crosses my mind. Well, I so don't particularly either. It, I, don't I struggled with either, this. Because it's sort of kind of... Ah, oh, see, that's weird, because I do in films. I really, really do. Sometimes I do in films, but mostly, like... Unless it's like really stand out, oh, no. because most of the time music ends up just like it just this is there and it adds something that you don't particularly notice to. I think. Yeah. Like but, without it, you'd notice it, but then with it, it's sort of normal. But I would I would argue that and say that you can usually tell these days when there's a crap film, like a really bad film, especially like an action movie, like a I don't know. I like the guy, but like a bad Gerard Butler film or Mel Gibson's son, he makes terrible movies at the moment, and and you can tell that they're bad because there's never a moment of silence. Like there's always just pointless mm. background noise, and it's really annoying. Like even even in a scene where it just doesn't need the music, like just two characters talking, and there's still just music, and it's it's so like I can't get it out of my head, and it that that for me is a sign of a bad film. Mm. 
is when there's just constant music. Well, I mean, like in an action moment, like I don't really notice the film, uh, the music. I uh, know I do until still. like, or in a game until there's meant to be a quiet bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't until I like sort of think about it. Like unless there's like a main theme tune that's like driving, like there's a constant uh, sort of callback during the film. So like I don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean. I've tune, I've had the, the Pirates theme tune in my head pretty much the whole time we've the been Avengers, recording. The Avengers sort of uh, that I don't know what that crescendo is. in um, things like that. That's sort of where, where I'm basing it off as well. Like, so quite a lot of mine is theme music. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, for me, I feel like I more pay attention to sound in games when it's sound effects. So mm. just as an example, I think because I've been watching Sekiro speedruns, I think the the design in that game of like the grappling hook arm thing and the sound of like the swords smacking against each other sounds so fucking good sounds just brilliant like amazingly good but anyway so what I was going to mention um, a game that I think has great music even though it's nothing like Mass Effect and it's really stupid is Loco Roco okay. and have you ever played Loco Roco? I don't think so okay do you know what it is? Like can you picture, I can it's, picture the cover. It's like the you play as the little ball that's just a creature. It's called a loco roco, um, and you roll around the world. So I I had it on PSP, and I've also played it on PlayStation Four. But it's better on PSP because it suits the novelty of having two hmm. um, shoulder buttons and not four. But you tilt the world to make the loco roco roll, and you have to gather up all your buddies and you eat each other and grow up into one massive loco roco. And the whole time there's like childish voices singing nonsense okay and it's like bum dum boy moi moi noi chugger da dum dum da dee dum bum bum so from bristol is that it literally is it's like it's mental nonsense that was a little bit bristolian chugger though that's the bit for me that i always think back to is just when they go like chugger and it's ah anyway and then there's parts of the game where to do like a, a secret area or to unlock a bonus bit you have to have collected enough of your buds and then you stand in front of like an animal, like a bird or some sort of thing that wants to let you through but only will let you through if you've gathered enough of your friends and then a bolt of lightning comes out of nowhere and you'll split up into individuals again and they all stack up on top of each other automatically you don't have to press anything and then as soon as they're like comfortable they start like swaying and sit hopefully this transcends into the microphone that i'm swaying as well and they just sing 3d sound 3d sound the sound of the future the future of sound um and yeah they all start singing and it's it's a beautiful moment oh and it's just as soon as you said let's talk about music in video games i was like logo logo because it's all i can think about yeah it's just fucking great okay. it, it it makes the game for me otherwise it would just be rolling a ball rolling okay. a sentient ball so I'm just gonna hmm. uh, rack off a few. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to being an theme adult. songs because this is an adult podcast. Uh, theme songs that aren't like oh, the see, whole soundtrack. Think. Okay, go for so, it. So a Halo theme, which we've had already. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't quite remember the Last of Us music. I can remember it being really like oh, it's a lot no. less action, and it was all. Just atmospheric, um, isn't it? Was it was really atmospheric, really emotional, and it worked really well, but I can't remember it enough to say how much I liked it. But the Last is, of Us yeah. theme song is that mental bloke on guitar. He really? just like untunes the guitar. It's like... Ding, 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 ding. You know, I can't even think of that. You, you'll recognise it. I'm so bad with, with music, apparently. Um, <laughs> Game music. And also the Uncharted theme, no. which is... Do, 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 do. Something like that. No, doesn't no, ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> doesn't ring a bell. I've played all four Uncharted games. Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> but it's really like it's kind of similar to that Pirates of the Caribbean. It's really like nice. got that adventure of course, feel yeah. to it. It's it's a really good one. Quite up tempo and gets you in the mood to go and yeah, yeah. go and find some treasure. Yeah. Maybe. So those are some of the theme songs that I've got. Okay. Um, but to go for another one's like whole game soundtrack and possibly the only video game soundtrack I've ever wanted to buy. Ooh. So I wanted to get the vinyl oh, of it. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe the composer is Sarah Curry. I've probably absolutely butchered that. But the <laughs> it sounds game... like a very easy name to not butcher, Sarah Curry. Well, no, I mean not butcher, but like I've forgotten the name completely. Oh, right. Um, the game is... The game is Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Oh, yeah. The music in that... Yeah, that is, is a very good so point. so good, because yeah. that's a game where you're like... 
it's all really uh, it's set in 80s uh, little village in uh, England and it's sort of based on like spirituality oh, what's, it called? Is, what's like, the village called sorry is it Great Yarmouth or something like that or is that a real place that's a real that's where my nan lives is it <laughs> yeah. fucking what's it it's called like Haggleton or something like that I'll look it up while you discuss your just out of personal interest well I'm looking at the um or is it called Little Something is it Great or Little what is it what did I say did I, who did I say uh, you said Sarah Curry it was Jessica Curry that's oh well, you were quite close oh, yeah close. yeah uh, I'm really hungry for a curry now um <laughs> But yeah, it's this little picturesque, quaint town, and the whole game is like, it's just a normal town, but then you've got these, like, godly lights, and it's all based mm. on, like... It's a very cool game. It's, yeah, it's such a good... It's, I think it was a shout-out in my top ten list. Um, oh, it's just called Yorton. Yorton, okay. Yorton. In um, Shropshire. Yeah. They nail the aesthetic. Oh, it's they really so do. good. That's part of the reason why I want, like, a video game in, set in the UK. That's like yeah, yeah. one of our things. Uh, one of our regular mm. things that we talk about. Represent GTA us. London, come on. Yeah, make it happen. Um, but yeah, it's all about uh, spirituality, as I said. And they've got like a choir uh, in the soundtrack with like a, a really... There's one that stands out. I can't remember what it's called, but like this really like high-pitched uh, choir member takes the lead and like this really angelic sort of singing in Latin kind of thing, like yeah, that just it's, adds see, that's so weird. much to the game. I like, can vaguely remember that, and I didn't even play that game. I yeah. watched it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I, cause it, on my PlayStation in that still... moment, like I think it's towards the end, and it's like you know, just like one of those moments where it's like, ah! yeah, 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 it was like so good, it perfectly fits the game, and I really wanted that for a time on vinyl. It yeah, was so good. That's a good shout. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot because I think it might be my favourite. Yeah, I mean it's it's In one of the of best. Atmosphere. I wouldn't say like all the songs. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a banger. <laughs> but like, in terms can't wait for track four. Yeah, exactly. But in yeah. terms of like the atmosphere that it sets, I think it just absolutely nails it. I would agree with that. And on that um, motif, a game that I could think of because I did think of some things, you did. just not many. You can think. Yeah, but we've kind of already mentioned it because um, our Redditors mentioned Halo a few times and my response was always, oh yeah, Bungie are great because I don't have too much reference for Halo because I never had an Xbox. And even though I played quite a lot of Halo, it was usually split-screen multiplayer, so I would be talking to the person I was playing with, not really paying attention to the music. So I know Halo had good music, but I'll tell you what had fucking great music was Destiny. Is it? Like, the first Destiny... Well, there's only been two. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, the music was just astounding in every like aspect. It was just per- like the raid music was so like intense. There's, even the, like the music for the strikes, they kind of matched their environments as well. So depending on what kind of boss you were facing, like depending on the races um, that you would fight within the game. So um, there was one strike, and I can't remember the name of it now, but where you basically fought a massive shank, which I know means nothing to you, but it's, it's like a little flying robot. And you would fight a, a massive one of them, and the music went all like techno-y and kind of mm. suited that fight because there was a lot of like electric going everywhere and and stuff like that. But then when you were fighting something like a massive ogre, it would be much more like traditional kind of Lord of the Rings style stuff, and it was just so well done. And to this day, I still kind of hate on Bungie for changing Vanilla Destiny's um, orbit music because it was this ethereal, like beautiful, and I can still. This is how good it is, right? Sorry, just to finish that. So it was like an ethereal choir. Anyway, this is how good it is. Also, if that guy outside could turn down his music, I really hope you guys can't hear that. Yeah, uh, that would be music, that would be fucking it? great. Turn that off right now. It might even be our downstairs neighbours, to be honest. It's really shit music. Oh, it's terrible. Um, but yeah, I can still remember Vanilla Destiny's Orbit music, but they changed it with every DLC. And the, oh wow, it's getting louder. It's so loud. It's so loud. That must We're, we're going to pause for a minute, guys. Sorry. Sorry about that, everyone. We're back. We've moved rooms because our rather friendly neighbour decided to keep playing his music, didn't he? Yeah, very loudly. Very sort loudly. Sort of followed us into the room it as did, well. It did, it did. But hopefully that's the end of it. Um, what was I... I was talking about Destiny, wasn't I? You were. So I resent Bungie because, um, yeah, way back, Vanilla Destiny, before they released any DLCs, they had this brilliant menu music, or Orbit music, sorry, because there's not really menu music per se. Uh, and then with every DLC or every major DLC, they changed the menu music. And it was never the same. It was never as good as vanilla. 
And even though I, I still played Destiny, if anything, I played more Destiny in the latter stages of the game than I did in vanilla, I still cling to that music mm. and not the other. So God, just gives you, gives you an idea of how impactful music actually is yeah. to games. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, well... Ooh. So I'm you gonna, can consult your list. And... I'm going to go next, yeah. So I'm just going to, again, a uh, couple of theme uh, soundtracks, rather, mm-hmm. this time. Um, See, s- when you say soundtrack, you mean... I sort of mean, like, licensed music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Something that is literally throughout the game, the, like, different tracks and different... Yeah, so, a sound- right, okay. so when I'm saying soundtracks now, actually, it's more uh, licensed music that's been uh, paid to put into the game yeah so like FIFA has soundtracks uh, best one being FIFA 8 by the way the Hoosiers FIFA 8 the Hoosiers what worried about Ray or goodbye, uh, goodbye Mr. Mr. 8 sounds yeah, like he says 8 yeah. oh, thank and you Duffy's in that one as well Duffy I think what Mercy, happened to Duffy she's I think she got eaten by Adele um, oh <laughs> it's a savage burn on Adele I don't right mean no, I literally oh god I didn't mean like that as a fat joke because uh, Adele was brilliant <laughs> I just mel- meant that... You like Adele? Well, I mean, she's brilliant. I don't listen oh, to her, no. but she's brilliant. No, she's so dreary. A dull. <laughs> okay. Wrecked. Double burn. Uh, so, first one. Uh, Need for Speed Underground 1. That soundtrack just oh, fucking yeah. nailed that. Like, neon lights and drifting. Yeah. Oh. I would also say that Need for Speed Most Wanted pretty much shaped my music taste. Interesting. A lot of sort of aggy, like metal, like Bullet for My Valentine and Avenged Sevenfold See, were both on that. A lot of electronic music. Underground was mostly hip hop and rap. Ah, uh, see, yeah, there you and go. I'm not into hip hop or rap. But another hip hop one is GTA San Andreas, mm. which um, had a perfect soundtrack. Like, I mean, you could get rock and stuff like that within the game and loads of different other stuff with all the radios but particularly what um, I'm always thinking of is the 90s hip hop that's in that game and how brilliant that just suits the aesthetic yeah, yeah. You particularly see, yeah. as well like the loading screens that like yeah with like the little yeah that yeah, yeah. such a perfect it's so like bit. Snoop Dogg yeah exactly it literally <laughs> yeah, just yeah. fits the whole vibe of the game I love that you could say the same, to be fair, about Vice City. Oh, I, actually, yeah, that was one I was going to add in, Vice yeah. City, because that was the the era, the is just... 80s Miami. That 1983, was... is it meant to be set? Oh, I'm like not that? entirely sure, but yeah, that with like the neon and mm. bright colours, really good. Just, the one that stands out yeah. for for me in that game was uh, uh, what's it called? Video killed the radio star. Yeah, by for five points. No. By the Buggles. Buggles. And would you like to know a very interesting fact about that song, given the title of it? All right, all right. It was the very first music video shown on MTV. Wow. How funny is that? That is funny. That's, yeah. a, that's a funny little one. Uh, you get some the... top facts on top chat. Yeah, indeed. Um, and then another one, the best one, po- probably the best video game music for me, mm-hmm. is Fallout 3. Well, and 4, they're largely the same. There's licensed music on Fallout. There is, because it's... Okay. Uh, I can't remember the entire lore reason, but it's like uh, the 50s in Fallout, um, but it's sort of... Yeah, it's like 50s during the Cold War, I think. Okay. Or maybe it's a bit later on than that. Uh, but basically, the, it's a 50s aesthetic and the world's stuck there. Uh, and then it gets bombed, and then the music that's left is like sort of 20s and 30s music that's very cool and so there's like a gap in the timeline of, of mm, music history yeah so it's, I think it's sort of it goes into a bit of like sort of rock and roll Motown yeah and like rockability and stuff like that um, wait what did you just say rockability oh okay I thought you said rockability 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 yeah that, yes. that's what I thought I was getting ready to correct you <laughs> I was like that's not what it's called but yeah, I imagine there's lots of swing, lots of jazz. Yeah, it's a little bit of that. And it's basically, nice. it's through a... Uh, so you've got the uh, Pip-Boy, which is your basically your menu, which is on your wrist, and mm-hmm. there's a radio station on that. And Fallout 3, it is... Oh, it's T-Dog or something like that. I haven't played it in a while. Who's presented it. He's a really charismatic presenter as well. But um, 
literally as you're walking around killing ghouls and super mutants and stuff you go he's popping he's racking he's popping <laughs> popping at me and it's just oh it's such a weird juxtaposition yeah but it works so much as with like all the fallout uh, like the little fallout man things like that it just yeah. works it's like that dark humour coming through represented in music by being this really upbeat really happy music that in the time of um, that it came after the Great Depression in America yeah like that sort of like more uplifting music things like that and that's one the I used to listen to that like music afterwards even as like after playing really? the game, I'd like I still do sometimes as well. There's oh, wow. like a Spotify Fallout playlist, okay. things like that. That's cool. Yeah. You've made me remember actually. I can't believe I didn't think of this, especially because I've been well. No, I haven't been replaying them recently. But last year, um, Bioshock is very similar in the sense of it's it's like post-apocalyptic kind of vibe. But then the music is again sort of that 30s, 20s, mm. 30s, 40s era, um, upbeat, jazzy swing. Like like club music, but not club music in the sense of what you get in these shitty times we live in. Yeah, like but like a live band with yeah, just like you know maybe a drummer, a pianist, uh, a double bass, and then just a couple of singers doing sort of like doo wop kind of stuff. Mm. And it's just and when you're walking around like a dysfunctional underground, oh, sorry underwater city, and then you happen upon like a cocktail bar, and there's still like a, a crackly radio playing that sort of music. And then a splicer runs out of nowhere. It's just, yeah. It's that mm. juxtaposition. Yes. That's how I like that word. Have you said it today already? I said it just like two minutes ago. That's maybe where I thought of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's popped into my head there sub subconsciously. Yes. But yeah, that, that's a good shout because, yeah, you've made me think of another one for, for my contributions. Go ahead. Well, no, that was it. My show. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't listening. No, you weren't paying attention. All right. But so- in terms of soundtracks, um, that's a good point. It's not something I really thought of, like licensed music and that, because there, there's quite a few games where I would say they have helped influence my taste in music massively. Yeah, I think you so, the snowboarding game you like. Mo- yeah, Most Wanted, as I just mentioned, SSX3, and to a certain extent on tour. Um, uh, Colin McRae Dirt 2. I think I've said this, this on the podcast before, but I mean, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that game. Mm-hmm. You don't remember the story? It's not really a story. Um, it's more yeah, of a it's, sequence yeah, yeah. of events. Um, and then, yeah, the GTAs. Mm. Like, massively influential. I mean, they are really... I think good, GTA 4 and 5 have got yeah. quite poor <laughs> radio stations to the point where... I mean, GTA 4 is, is pretty awful, to be honest. 5 isn't bad. like the, Especially the hip-hop station. Like mm. Radio Los Santos is really good. and got me into Kendrick Lamar, for one. And also Nipsey Hussle features quite a few times on Radio Los Santos may he rest in peace um, do you know about that do you no do you remember the song on Radio Los Santos it's like hold up I had to drop my bitch I need no hold ups that maybe, one maybe it's quite a good it's one of the better songs on there and he features on that song and a couple of others and yeah he he, uh, he I believe was murdered the other week which is oh shit yeah it's a shame he was sort of on the up was, was Nipsey Hussle mm. Um, so yeah, quick shout out to him, I guess. But uh, I'm trying that to reminds think. Reminds me, I actually uh, used to used to work with someone who he's like a DJ, electronic producer, a music producer. I don't know what you'd call him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he has he uh, designed a piece of music for one of the missions in GTA. Oh, you've told me about this. It's the uh, the infamous drug taking mission yeah, in GTA Five, isn't it? Like I think it's when you're falling out of. The yeah, sky yeah. or something. You're playing as Michael and you skydive. Yeah. Is it Michael or Trevor? I think it's Michael because he's just... Yeah, it's Michael. Yeah, yeah, because Trevor's scared of clowns. So Trevor, you shoot all the clowns. Because mm. you can go to the same guy with all three of them, can't you? Yeah. And they all have different they do the, reactions. The, I don't know. What do they do? Smoke a joint or something? They smoke a joint, yeah. With, like LSD, I don't know. Yeah. Um, that sounds pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a fun time. Yeah, he, he designed the, the music in that. And, That's pretty uh, cool. It was really weird after like... Because I remembered the mission as he was speaking about it. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's a very memorable mission. It is, yeah. I, I was trying to think if there's any other games that I would say have, have shaped my taste because it's quite a big claim, really. But thinking yeah. about it, it's oh, it's accurate. I've got 
I've got a couple, uh, just two more okay. on my list, and then I'll hand it over then to we'll, you. Yeah, we'll wrap, we'll wrap up. up. Uh, so Skyrim, the theme tune. I don't know. I can't remember if I mentioned that, but no, no, you didn't. That's fine. Yeah, that's a pretty iconic one, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. Oh, you sound like you're sat on a vibrator. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I basically always am. Sat Not on a, a porn podcast <laughs> yet. Shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my god. Did I tell? No, I wouldn't have told you this because it feels like a weird thing to say. But do you know who Mia Khalifa is? She's like the only porn star I know, and it's because she's so, yeah. the most famous one. Because yeah, I'm, I'm going to sound yeah, like I'm trying to be name, some kind I can't of, think of what she looks like. Um, kind of dark skinned, like a Middle Eastern kind of look to her. Maybe. She's just got massive. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not. <laughs> that's what she's known for. Um, she was in Breasts. Westfield the other day, so I work in in oh, Westfield, shit. London, which is the one of the biggest shopping centres in Europe. Um, not that I give a shit, but yeah, she was there the other day, and mm. people were taking pictures with her. And I was yeah. like, I recognise her, and I wasn't sure why. And then my manager piped up and was like, that's Mia Khalifa. And I was like, oh, the porn star. He went, yeah, she was at the Arsenal game the other day. No, sorry, West Ham game. I think Apparently oh. she's a big fan of West Ham. Yeah, she went for the no, football and then just went that. shopping. Interesting. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, so go see Matt at his work in Westfield's Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. Any fans? Come, come and find me. Not yeah. that you don't know you don't know what I look like, you don't know where I work, oh, but right. I'm got, about. Oh, two sorry, more. carry so on. We could, yep. quickly need to finish up. Uh, oh, we really soon. do. Yeah, shit. I don't um, need a pee. I need to get changed. Portal Two. Ah, oh, yeah. Of course. But yeah. I can't particularly remember much music throughout the game again, uh, but I am going to go back and play Portal Two now. I've up, thinking uh, about it. There's not, unpacked my PS3. There's not um, much music. No, really, I can't think of it. It doesn't need it. Uh, but the end, specific. Well, there's two end, two end music bits, which are brilliant. Yeah. Uh, once you've just finished a game, and you've come back from the moon. Spoilers. Spoilers, yeah, too late. Spoilers. Yeah, it's, t- it's far too late, and it takes about three hours to play the game. Fucking get, yeah, get, get off it. it. Um, and you're leaving the uh, the underground laboratory uh-huh. uh, on the elevator, and all the turrets mm. make this sort of choir as you're like rising up. Yeah, it's which just is quality. brilliant, and yeah. like they're all moving. And like it makes this really like some of them have like fallen over. It's kind of like yeah, <laughs> it's like again like uh, it's kind of similar to like everybody's gone to the raptures. You're like rising up, and you get out, yeah. and you're just like in a field. And it's like oh, okay, and cool then, like, ending. Yeah, and then it's like stops, and then during the credits, um, want you gone, want you gone, the gla- Glad- glados. glados. Oh, it's so such funny. a good song. So yeah, that's a... what's the line? With? I can't remember exactly what it is, but she says like. We used to be such good friends. Oh wait, no, we weren't, or something like that. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's the most brilliant tongue-in-cheek. Just, it just, and it just fits the uh, whole vibe of the game when she's like, uh, she just basically slags you off and like, yeah, um, oh like you did really well in that one. Like, oh wait, no, now, you didn't, yeah. and things like that. Just like little like, yeah, things like that. I mean, the fact that the song is called "I Now I Want You Gone" or like "Now yeah. I Only Want You Gone" it's yeah, just yeah. Oh, it's quality. That's that's a great shout. Um, and Very last well little shout out is just for a technical standpoint is No Man's Sky I really enjoy <gasps> that music because <gasps> it's sorry <gasps> done by a bank how with 65 times? days of static how many times are you going to mention this fucking awful I f- game love No Man's Sky why chill yeah well someone's got to chill bah. no everyone oh loves God. it now. what was that everyone loves it it's great All right, 65 days of static quite a famous band and it is procedurally generated as well what the music? Yeah. So there's oh, okay, like base bits cool. of the music, I'll give you that. and then that's like cool. it, uh, depending on like the planet and stuff that you're on, it affects the music, and it's very cool. Lovely. Should have ended on Portal. That would have been better. Yeah, I know. Anyway, we usually like to end the podcast with one of two segments. Sometimes we do both. Sometimes we do neither. And today we're doing neither. But yeah. what they are for the new listeners, if there are any, hopefully there are. Um, is one is called Controversial Corner, where one of us will uh, take a stroll down the Controversial Corner and just mm. drop an opinion that you probably won't agree with. Uh, and the other one is called Memory Card, where we just talk for a few minutes about a game from our past that we enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But today we don't have time to do either, because I've got to go to work after the morning's washing machine fiasco. And I also need a toilet. A toilet? I also a need toilet. A, a pee. A wee wee. Jesus Tinkle. Christ, it was going so well. Um, yeah, I need a well, tinkle. Well, hopefully no one's got this far anyway. <laughs> ah, I kind of hope they have. Yeah, I need a tinkle, uh, so I'm going to go and do that. But thanks very much for listening. If you have got this far, as always, get in touch with Twit- or with us on Twitter, at Top Chat Podcast. Give us some more music. Give us Yeah, give us some more music. Give us your suggestions. Um, 
fo- I don't know if you can follow people on Reddit or not, but I'm probably going to be posting a bit more there from now on because that seemed to go fairly well. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you can find us on YouTube, uh, Top Chat Games Podcast, something like that. Um, just leave a few comments, I guess. Subscribe, share with your friends, all that shit. I'm waffling because I need to pee. Okay. Bye for now. Bye for now.